Welcome to another episode of Real Talk with you by Lanka Public Web. Uh, today we have with us a tax expert, Mr. Mahesh Shugrajan, director of uh, Lanka.tax. And today we are going to discuss about capital gain tax. Uh, we had several inquiries throughout our through our social media channels and regarding this and uh, that's why we thought of uh, clear uh, most of the doubts you have uh, using our expert in the subject area. For the sellers of the properties who haven't paid their ta- capital gain taxes, that's offered till 31st March 2022. Yeah. Uh, to begin the program, I'd like to invite uh, Mahesh to uh, tell about his company and how they're going to help people uh, to solve their tax issues. Thank you, Karin. Look, thank you for having us here. I think it's a great initiative that Lanka Property Web is taking to help all the investors in real estate pay only the due tax and not anything extra, right? And Lanka.tax helps senior executives and HNIs pay the least tax possible, protect their money, protect their reputation, 100% legally, 100% online. We exist to provide the best experience in tax and wealth management to help our clients achieve their retirement goals and their family's financial goals. Um, thank you, uh, Tarindu. We can proceed with the rest of the interview. Yes, thank you, Mahesh. Uh, uh, to be uh, with the uh, capital gain tax, I would like to ask you this question. Uh, what is actually this uh, capital gain and uh, what is this tax all about? Right. So um, a lot of us own assets. We will own a variety of assets, lands, apartments, uh, cars, anything that can hold value is an asset or an income stream, a future income stream is also considered an asset. Now, when you sell an asset, if you sell it above the price that or the cost that you incurred in acquiring that asset, that gain is called a capital gain, right? And that is taxable. And uh, Mahesh, then uh, the asset qualifying for this capital gain. Right. So uh, investments in assets that are considered capital assets, right, um, are land or buildings, a share in a company, partnership or a trust, a security or other financial asset, uh, even a debenture note, a sharehold, um, an option, a right. Uh, so fairly broad definition, a store of value is what I would generally go as, go with for easy understanding. Now we know what is the capital gain and what are the qualifying assets. And uh, Maish, can you explain, the, uh, explain how to determine the cost of the asset? Sure. So when you're... Great question, because when you're calculating your gain, you have to look at uh, what your, you obviously know what your selling price is and you need to understand what your cost is. Your cost is quite simply put the acquisition value. Now, there is a little bit of a complication here. If you inherit an asset, right? In the event you inherit an asset, it is, and it is received as a gift or as a result of another person's death, in that situation, it is not, it, the value is the original cost at which it was purchased because the gain has not been realized. So essentially, if, you, if your parents were to buy a property for 20 million rupees and in 20 years time, give it to you, while you hold it, it is not taxable, right? Because, but when you sell it, let's say you sell that, at 40 million, uh, five years later, it goes 40 million minus the original purchase price of 20 million. At the point it was transferred to you, it may have already been worth 40 million, but because the gain, uh, the way the gain is calculated, you have to take back the original, take it back to the original purchase price, right? Now, there's another exemption to this. This is an interesting one, which I think a lot of people can benefit from. If your purchase was before 
if you purchased it, not an inherited asset, but if you purchased an asset before the 30th of September 2017 uh, and you're selling it today, what you have to do is your gain is calculated as the gain from the 30th of September 2017 valuation, the gain from that date till today, right? So you should have got a valuation on your property as at that date uh, in order to establish that as the baseline for cost or market value. And uh, Mahesh, uh, now we know how to calculate it. And uh, so uh, who should pay for this tax? So the seller of the asset who receives the proceeds from the sale needs to make the payment of capital gain. Um, and this payment is due before the end of the month following the sale, right? So that means if you sold a property in January, it can be the 1st of January or the 31st of January, that capital, the, the capital gains tax on that sale is due before the 28th of February. So uh, what are the exemptions uh, in here, Mahesh? Because uh, sometimes we may be getting the land from uh, my parents to me. And so is it taxable or how it works? So receiving the land from your parents is not taxable. However, when you sell it, the gain is paid on the purchase price that they paid originally, right? So, uh, yeah. And again, that 30th September 2017 exemption does apply. Now, one interesting thing that it is that is important to note, right, is that if you sell your primary place of residence that you have owned continuously for three years and you have lived in for two years, then that is exempt from a capital gains tax because you're not in the business of selling your home. You have lived there for two years, you have owned it for three years, then you're selling it, that doesn't apply for a capital gain. So just look at the timelines when you're about to sell a property. If you can stay there for an extra month and save 10% on the gain, it might be worthwhile deferring the sale by that month in order to be more tax efficient. Separately, there's one other minor exemption. It probably won't apply to properties because they're large value, but gains made by a resident individual, when they sell and realize an investment asset that is less than 50,000 per asset and 600,000 per annum is exempt, right? So small amounts, don't worry about, but that limit is so low, I can't imagine a single property that goes at that value, right? The Just for completeness, if you own shares of any company on the stock exchange, that capital gain is again exempt from taxation. So, um, I'm not sure, okay, now I sold the property, now I know I had paid taxes. So my next question is how to furnish uh, capital gain tax returns? Okay, so you, what you need to do is first calculate your actual gain, right? Once your gain is calculated, there's a format that you fill out and pay it with a pain slip at the Inland Revenue Department. That is a fairly simple process. The department can guide you through it, but making sure you get the right cost in there will save you a lot of cash when you sell it, right? So you're better off taking a little bit of professional advice there from most accountants who can help, right? Um, currently, one thing I would tell you is that payment of the capital gain amount is very important because non-payment carries massive penalties, right? The uh, uh, penalty for tax evasion Essentially, if you know you have, if you've made a gain and you're supposed to know that you have to pay a capital gain tax, if you don't, that goes as tax evasion and the penalties could be up to 10 million rupees or two years imprisonment or both, right? So interest and late payment penalties will also apply on that, uh, on, on, on your 
amount due. Uh, so there is very little benefit in deferring this. So uh, Raji, where in your taxes, uh, yeah, use a tax expert on it to save and plan your taxes coming in. And uh, then Mahesh, uh, okay. So that's a good news as well for those who couldn't make their payments, right? So uh, yes, we yes. can go ahead. Yes, good that news. Fantastic news. Right now, if you have sold a property before the 31st of March, 2020, remember this date, 31st March, 2020. If you have sold a property before the 31st of March, 2020, you can apply under the Finance Act of 2021 that uh, you can apply for a tax amnesty. Now, what is this? You are supposed to voluntarily go to the tax department and submit an application for uh, submit an application under the tax amnesty. What it allows you to do is to declare all your income, anything that you haven't declared already, undeclared income or undeclared assets, pay only 1% of that amount and have complete indemnity from investigation, from prosecution, which is unheard of. Now, when you think of a tax amnesty, it can be unfair to the people who have already paid their taxes, right? But if we're looking forward and looking to the future where everybody is treated equally, at least from today, you should take your advantage of the benefit that is available to disclose everything that you haven't uh, disclosed before. For example, you bought a property at 30 million, you sold it at 70 million. You have a 40 million gain. You can declare, if you have declared the purchase at 30 million, now then, and you only haven't declared the 40 million gain, you can show the difference by, you, there are, there's a schedule that you have to submit, but you can show the gain that is calculated as 40 and tell the tax department, pay, guess how much you have to pay. Guess how much you have to pay, right? Just 1%, right? So you're paying 400,000 rupees only to protect yourself against investigation and prosecution for not having paid what should have been a 4 million tax, right? So you pay one tenth of it with this declaration and then they can't investigate it further. They can't prosecute you for it. So the only problem here is that we're running out of time. The deadline to submit these applications is the 31st of March, 2022. So we have just over a month. We really have to move fast in order to calculate your gain, make sure the calculation is correct. The, um, often people will make mistakes like say, no, I didn't pay the, I, the 70 million is the asset and therefore I have to pay 700,000. Why would you waste an extra 300,000 rupees? You're already not getting taxed on 40. Maximize your gain. If you're trying if you're trying to make a gain, maximize it, right? Take the advice of somebody who understands how to do an amnesty declaration. Work out that it's, own, understand that it's only 40 that you have to pay. You have to pay tax on the 40 million and pay the 400,000. You'll save a lot more than the fee that anybody charges. That's absolutely a great news for our officers so who just uh, missed out their capital gain tax payments on time. And uh, I think uh, Lanka or tax are uh, always there to help them out, right? Yes, we are here, as I said before, right? We are here to help senior executives and HNIs pay the least tax possible, protect their money, protect their reputation by doing this 100% legally. And it'll be so easy for them to do because they can do it 100% online as well. Okay. Thank you so much, Mahesh. And uh, Mahesh, contact details will be in the description of this video. Uh, you can all talk to him and get your uh, hours clarified.
thank you so much, Mahesh, for joining with us today. Um, thank you, Tarantu. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to your audience. I hope a lot of people benefit from this tax amnesty. Yes. Uh, so we will see you in another see you in another video. Fair talk.